Hey everybody, welcome to Cooking Live. I'm David Rosengarten filling in for Sarah Moulton. Now, what would any festive meal be without a grand finale? No matter how delicious and filling the rest of the menu, everyone manages, I know I do, to save room for dessert, especially, especially in a week like this during the holidays. So on Cooking Live tonight, we are turning our attention to spectacular desserts for your Easter table. And here to show us that spectacular doesn't necessarily mean difficult or time-consuming, is master baker and cookbook author Rose Levy Berenbaum. Rose, as I'm sure you know, is the author of The Cake Bible and The Pie and Pastry Bible, and I guess that makes you the high priestess of baking, Rose, no, <laughs> and modest to the core. Hi, Rose, how are you? Hi, David. Good to see you. You too. We've got not one Rose dessert tonight, not two, but three dessert. Oh, I see, mm. you're already spooning for me. Okay, you want me to taste this? This is a little preview Bionese. of what's coming up. All right, I have the opportunity to taste a pound cake made by Rose Levy Barenbaum. Am I excited? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Any good? <laughs> yeah, any good. <laughs> Great. See, I don't think pound cake really needs any adornment. It's so perfect, especially right. when it has the poppy seeds. But having the fresh berries that are not a sauce but are held together with a glaze really complements it. It's a great idea. Well, we're going to take um, our viewers through this step by step in just a moment. But you're making three desserts tonight. And I guess the thinking is something like uh, you can make sort of a dessert buffet at the end of your holiday dinner or your Easter dinner. It's really so. lovely for holidays to have an assortment. It looks so opulent and celebra celebratory. Right. Now, of course, that sounds like that's going to be a lot of work for the cook but I guess one of the saving graces is that you can do a lot of this in advance. Is that the case? Definitely. In fact, a couple of these desserts freeze beautifully and can be even made a week ahead without freezing. Really? And you can add things to it that you buy to make it a little bit extra special, like ice cream or make another sauce. So it's really fun to be able to treat your guests to have a selection. And especially when it's so easy to do, these happen, if you choose wisely, these happen to be very simple desserts. All right, we've been saying easy, easy, easy. It's time to prove it. First, you're going to make this uh, pound cake. And be before you start, let me just ask you, it's very interesting, that, that name, pound cake. Uh, where do, you, where do you think it comes from? It's not because it weighs a pound. <laughs> <laughs> right, though. So. It's because the basic ingredients originally were a pound of each, a pound of sugar, a pound of butter, a pound of eggs, and a pound of flour. But modern day versions like mine have a little less egg, a little bit of milk, mm. because it makes it less dense and chewy. I like it to be tender as well as buttery. You like it to be tender, and so do I. Well, now, listen, let me tell you what our menu tonight is. We are starting with the lemon poppy seed pound cake, uh, which has the blueberry glaze. But uh, after that, we're going to make the cordon rose cheese cake. And the one that particularly has me quivering is the brownie puddle. As Stick it should. As <laughs> it should. Stick around. All will be revealed shortly. All right, let's start the uh, the pound cake. So what do we do? Oh, Rose. First we get the blueberries and the pound cake out of the yeah. way. Okay. We begin so at the beginning. Starting from scratch, what do you so do? So we start with three eggs, mm -hmm. large eggs, and a little bit of milk. Okay. Actually, well, yes, three tablespoons. Right? Three tablespoons of milk, right? Three and large eggs. pure vanilla extract. One and a half teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. And David, just beat this together lightly until it... Really? Yeah, you can do okay, it. Okay, I'll do it. Let's see. I've seen you in action. <laughs> okay, I can do it, sure. It's just to mix the ingredients right. so they go in more evenly. Lightly, like, does it matter if I go 20 seconds, 30 seconds? Doesn't no, matter. in fact, you can continue until I end, end up putting everything into this mixer. Okay, you're putting the dry ingredients okay. in, the, in the mixer. Yeah, this is cake flour. One it's and very and important cups. to use cake flour and not self-rising. Now this is, uh, you use the, uh, the the classic sifting technique, right? You sifted it right into the cup and exactly. measured it after that. Exactly, and then that. leveled it off. Leveled it off. Mm -hmm. And so you have one and a half cups of the sifted uh, cake flour yeah, in here. Yeah, you're right, David, because otherwise you could end up with a lot more flour Different. than you intended, and then you get back to that chewy, dense cake instead of a tender one. That was the sugar. The, so what are, wait, what are the operative adjectives? We want tender, we not want chewy, tender. dense. Right. Tender is what we're looking for. Tender and And velvety. tender you shall have, no <laughs> doubt about it. <clears throat> Didn't you just? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I did, in fact. So <laughs> now, let's, let's, uh, yeah, I admit it. It's easy to admit. So you put in three quarters of a cup of super fine sugar, mm -hmm. and then you put the poppy seeds in there? Yep. Which were three tablespoons of poppy seeds. Mm -hmm. and Anything to know about buying poppy seeds or just any old poppy well, seeds? Well, actually, smell them because if they're stored too long or if you keep them too long, they get rancid, and you can definitely smell that. They get bitter. Okay. But if you buy it in a store, you, you won't have any problem, and you can even store it in the freezer if you want. 
Mm. White poppy seeds are an interesting variation, and then they don't get into your, well, they do get into your teeth, but you don't see them that oh, way. Oh, am I going to have poppy seeds in my, uh -huh. in my teeth? Yep. Okay, no, you, don't you are yet. warned. Don't no, I don't <laughs> yet, but I will later. Not a first date kind of food, mm. I guess. And you can get white, white poppy seeds at Eastern supply stores, like Cary Indian spices. They have basically they have the flavor? same flavor. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay, did I just put in, yep, the baking powder? Baking powder. Just a touch that makes it more tender. Three and quarters of a teaspoon of baking powder. Lemon zest. Lemon zest, one tablespoon of grated lemon zest. And then, And whoops. that's it, you're ready to roll. And <laughs> yeah. salt, you put salt in there too, quarter <laughs> teaspoon of salt. Thank you, Dave. Okay. And then you just mix it so the dry ingredients are mixed together. Okay. And then, <laughs> working a little backwards here. It's butter time. <laughs> yeah. We now put the butter in, which is softened to squishable but cool temperature. Oh, that's technical talk. Squishable mm -hmm. but cool. I like yeah. that. You don't want it to be runny and melted because then you won't get as good a texture. Right. And this, of course, is unsalted butter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's 13 tablespoons. Exactly. You are nothing if not precise. <laughs> I mean, that's well, why you could use 12, but if you use 13, it's going to be that much more delicious. <laughs> ah, of course. How about 14 while we're at it? Uh, no. One <laughs> great thing, if you have the cake Bible or the pie and pastry Bible, Rose is very precise. She's one of those great recipe writers who takes you by the hand and leads you through. So. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. I've used half of this mixture with the eggs and the vanilla to put in and start mixing. And it's going to mix about a minute until it gets all evenly incorporated. Now what if I'm not a big deal fancy uh, home cook and I don't have one of these? What, what would I do? If you use a handheld electric mixer, just mix at high speed because that way it mixes almost like this big mixer. Okay. And do it This one is at slow minutes. speed and that one you do at high speed. I start at slow speed and then I bring it to about number four. And that's the perfect speed. Where number four is halfway down okay. the line here. But if you're using a handheld, I would do it on the highest power that you can. And just look for the good consistency. I mean, we're there. It, it happens Listen, very quickly. I've got one more mixer question because, like, you, you're not only all over baking and pastry and ingredients, but you're all over equipment as well. Oh, yeah, I see I that you're equipment. using the, uh, the paddle, not the whisk. Mm -hmm. And why do you do that in this case? The only time you use a whisk in this type of mixture or type of beater is when you're trying to get a lot of aeration, like when mm. you're doing whipped cream. Mm -hmm. Whipping is the key word. Or when you're doing a chiffon cake and want tons of air or meringue. But for the basic cake, you use the flat beater, unless instructed otherwise. By you. By whomever. <laughs> <laughs> By whoever is writing the recipe. Okay, so you've got that all mixed together. That was half of the egg mixture went in. And we're ready for stage two. So next, we're going to finish making the pound cake, and then we're going to top it off with that delicious blueberry glaze that you saw before that Rose served me. If I were you, I would not go away. <laughs>